Hey guys, today we got a new event notice, Shard Summon Calendar for Isolde. She is the defender, the epic lord for the North faction. So it seems we're having these now potentially rolling monthly. Last month we had the fusion for Aeon, the curse epic lord. Before that there was a few months gap and I believe it was Pyros around Halloween time, which is roughly when I started. And then I think a few months prior to that they had Lunaria. So they had the Infernal Blast Pyros and then a bit before that they had Lunaria. So I think it's safe to assume, if, if things stay on the current path, after Isolde he will have a look at in just a second. Likely in a month's time, hopefully, fingers crossed, we get Raiden. Because it will be quite cool to have Esoteria's Faction Lord as well. So maybe this is a monthly thing from now on, seeing as we've had this so close after Aeons. But we'll see, that remains to be seen. Anyway, let's take a look at Isolde. I do not have her yet. One of the only defenders I'm currently missing, along with the Legendary Lord for the same North Faction. So, Isolde. This is Isolde. She is up for grabs in the Fusion event. We'll go over the calendar in the latter half of this video. But for now, I want to talk about Isolde and why you may want to get her. So, she is a defender, as you know, from the North Faction. She is a Lord. Her benefits are she grants 10% stats to all members in the Faction, and she has Defense of the North. Periodically, allies will gain 20% max HP as a shield that will last for 20 seconds. And the more faction members there on the team, the more frequent this effect will take place. So 20% max HP is pretty freaking good. The North faction lords are incredibly good for gear Ray 2 especially. And probably for anything in future that requires tanking. So personally, I think this is very valuable. I would probably put her above Aeon in value, honestly. Although you may get more use out of Aeon, it's more replaceable. Tankiness via shielding is kind of hard to achieve outside of the North Faction. Damage is damage, there's a billion sources of it. But niche abilities and effects and ways of granting shields are quite hard to come by. So I actually really, really rate Isolde. And although you may not get as many uses out of her as you may do Aeon or a typical damage dealer, when you do need a soldier and you have her, she will shine really, really bright. So I do recommend her. So let's go over her skills quickly. Her talent, gain 6% defense bonus for each enemy blocked, stacking up to 5 times. She has a default block of 3. If you give her the artifact Olag's Wall, then that will be 4. Her basic attack, just standard, but every 7 attacks, she deals AoE damage to all blocked enemies. She does common damage types, so she has no bonuses to light or heavy armor. She has her manual activated ultimate, which when activated increases the block value of allies within the skill range by 1 and it grants them physical and magical damage reduction starting at 10% going up to 30%. I'm assuming this includes herself, I don't actually know because I don't have her, but it makes sense if you look at her basic talent as well which goes up to 5 which you can only hit with Olag's wall and assuming shield wall does apply to her. So mainly the thing to note with her shield wall, she increases a block of adjacent allies and she grants them up to 30% damage reduction is quite useful to have especially again in gear raid 2 and her passive the northern guard alter every once in a while grants heliga this should be isolde her name was previously heliga if you are confused that's why and allies on the left and right sides a shield equal to 30% of isolde's max hp the shield increases by 10% for every one block value increased heliga slash isolde the shield lasts for 10 seconds so it says every once in a while i think what they mean is 30 seconds going by this so this tooltip clearly needs to be updated. Max skill will grant an additional 12% to the shield, so 42% of her max HP. The rest of it is 4% to the extra shield. So you can see this is going to work out being a very, very large shield overall. And generally in Gear Raid 2, this will be incredibly helpful, especially if you have healers who are struggling to stay alive. Not even mentioning Gear Raid 2, 19 onwards. Even before that, this will help you a lot keep your team alive. Just have her next to your core healer and her shielding on them every now and then. Yes, the uptime is only 33% a third of the time, but that is still incredibly valuable. Being able to block so much damage instances is going to help a lot with the passive damage. It's going to help a lot with the ground shakes that the boss does. Generally, just a really powerful auto. So that's generally what Isolde is about. She is really good at defending allies. She's good at increasing their block amount. She's giving lots of shields of her passive pretty regularly. And not to forget that her shield wall allows her to choose, because it's manual, when to grant allies up to 30% damage reduction. So that's a very, very useful skill to have. And let's take a really quick look at her awakenings. So the first one, when she activates her ultimate, she gains 8% of her max HP as a shield for each block value she has. So at maximum it should be I believe 5 with Olag's wall and with her ultimate up if I'm understanding the ultimate correctly. If not it will be 4 but either way that is a huge amount of shielding to get. So that basically will mean at just awakening 1 whenever she ults she'll be granting herself 32 or 40% of her max HP as a shield on top of 30% damage reduction. So lots of shields coming up from her very very powerful stuff. The second is health. The fourth is damage reduction which is nice. So her third one increases her attack by 5% of her HP, so this is kind of like a built-in Glacier set. It's not bad, but she's not really going to be there for damage, so I don't think this will really matter too much. 
And her fifth one requires two less attacks to trigger her AoE basic attack. Again, she's not really there for damage. I could be wrong about this, I don't have her, but she's a defender, so I'll be very surprised if she's putting out noticeable damage. I think Awakening 1 is going to be incredible, so I will definitely be chucking a Soul Stone into her when I get her in the event if I do not manage to pull two. So that pretty much covers Isolde very, very quickly. As you can see, not many people have her because Lords are, you know, Lords in this game. They're very hard to pull. So let's have a look at the event calendar and see what we need to keep in mind and what considerations we need to make in advance of the event. So the fusion event will start on February the 24th and finish on March the 12th. February the 24th is a Friday and March the 12th is a Sunday. So this will be from this Friday till a few Sundays away. So we have plenty of time, but it does start very soon. And let's go over what the actual individual events are. To summon her, we need 75. There are only 65 shards available from the events and 50 available from the Oracle's Trials. But bear in mind the Oracle's Trials 50 does not include winning or placing in the top three. This 50 is just if you can get all of the participation awards. So assuming you're able to clear all of the events and clear all of the Oracle's Trials, you'll be able to get 115 shards when you only need 75, which makes things quite easy to do. So something interesting, I just had a look back at one of my older videos, the Aeon video, and in the Aeon video there were 90 event shards available and 60 Oracle's Trial available, so that we have actually had a big drop in available shards for this event. So if you had any trouble with the Aeon event, then be ready to fight a little bit harder in the Oracle's Trials for the Assault event, because this will probably be a bit trickier. Again, I think it should be fairly easy. I didn't work too hard in the Aeon event, and I managed to fuse two. So I think we're, again, still going to be okay to get a solder. It's just it's a little bit tighter than it was before. Overall, there's 35 less shards available. They've removed five from the Arrival of Heroes on either side, and they've also removed five from the Corridors of Glory and five from the Spiritual Altar. So these are previously 20 for the Spiritual Altar and 15 for the Corridors of Glory. So that means that the farming ones, the Brave Conquests, the different raid ones are all the same. Now, if we have a look at the actual event breakdown, We'll start with the Oracle's Trials first because it's a bit smaller. The Arrival of Heroes is a summoning event and these do vary person to person. I don't know how or why or what the logic is behind how they vary but they do vary. Here is mine at the moment as it's currently still available. So you can see usually they put the shards around the second last milestone but again the range of these varies quite a lot. So definitely save summons if you're really keen on getting more than one Isolde. I think it should be safe to get one Isolde. I don't think it will be too hard to get one, but getting two might be quite hard in this event. So after the arrival of heroes, we have Forgotten Palace, which is gear raid free. Mystery of Artifacts, which is the Artifact Fragment raid, which I've been farming like mad after the new drops. Then we have the Lost Legacy, which is gear raid one, and Vault in the Sands, which is gear raid two. These should all, four of these should be super easy to get these shards. That should be basically 20 guaranteed shards out of your 75 just in there. The Arrival of Heroes, they might be split into two lots, so it will depend on where that lands as to how hard this actually is. If the 10 is at the end by itself, it will be quite hard to get the shards from this, so hopefully it's a 5-5 split. Awakening of Heroes is pretty simple as it sounds. Leveling, starring, and promoting heroes will grant you points for Awakening of Heroes. Usually this is not too bad, but you need to make sure you have stuff available to awaken. Make sure you've farmed up some materials, buy fodder from the shop, etc. So generally... The Oracle's Trials shouldn't be too bad. There is a potential that Arri Arrival of Heroes is especially hard this time. It depends on how they split the shards. If they are 10 weighted at the end, then it could be very hard to get these 20. But again, if you're playing regularly, I don't think that would be too hard. So moving on to the event side. Corridor of Glory, very similar to Awakening with Heroes. is to do with leveling up, starring up, and promoting heroes. We have one at the start and one at the end. Only 10 shards this time. The events both last for four days. These generally aren't too bad to do, but it is a lot of stuff to have to do. Just make sure that you're buying as much fodder as you can again and see if you can stagger it so that you have enough for the awakening of heroes as well don't overdo it on the first one don't overdo it on the middle one pace yourself for out all three if you're worried about making enough shards by the end of the event so we have two of those for 20 then we have brave conquest next so brave conquest will be up almost the entire event there's one day downtime at the start another one nearly a weekend again and then two days at the end but other than that the Brave Conquest will be up for 12 days in total, 3 times 4 And this is pretty simple, this is just gear raids and artifact fragment raid. Typically, artifact fragment raid gets you the most return. I think it's artifact material raid now. That gets you the most return on points. If you need to quickly win, I would suggest just using the artifact material raid to farm. It does help a lot, and there are new artifacts. So, for me personally, I'll be doing this. However, do keep in mind, these do line up with other events as well. Generally, it's a good idea to 
look at the Oracle's Trial and farm whatever that is. I would just say if you're having trouble near the end finishing Brave Conquest for whatever reason, then just farm Artifact Material Raid a bit to help you finish it off. Next we have Tales of the Smith. There are two of these worth five each. I personally hate this event so much because it takes like five million gold I would recommend to have stockpiled in order to actually succeed this event. It depends where they put the fragments. Usually it's near the end especially when there was only five available. There was previously 10 available in the last event. There was only five this time. So this is certainly going to be available only one milestone in that event. And it's probably going to be near the end. So either have four to five million saved for each one, or I would skip it if you don't think you can get those. You only get points by upgrading stuff to milestone levels with four, eight, 12, and 16. The most money efficient way to upgrade gear is just to take it to 12 and then sell it. For many of these events in the past, I've upgraded absolute garbage gear drops to 12 and then sold them immediately. No interest of ever using them, just there to farm some points to the event. It's not very useful, you're kind of just throwing gold away, but I think if you need those fragments, then it's an option for sure. Next, we have Jewel of Champions. This is 5. It was previously 5, so this one has not been changed. This is quite an annoying event. As you see, it lasts 4 days. You need to win a total of 20 arena matches. If you lose a match, you get 1 point. And you need 200 points in total. If you win, you get 10 points. So you need to win 20 matches of Arena in 4 days. So obviously you need to win all 5 games a day to win this event. My strongest suggestion to you is just do not do any Arena from Sunday onwards. You will pick up 2 additional each day. And by the time you start on Friday, you should have 8 additional Arena attacks. It's not a crazy amount, but it can help give you a lot of leeway so you don't have to waste diamonds refilling your attacks. This is what I do. Other people do deliberately drop their Arena ranking as well, so they have Arena match easier Arena matches. I don't mind that too reliable because a lot of people will be doing it at the same time. And I kind of still want to get the rewards at the end of the week. So I don't really like that strategy. I prefer just to save my attacks until the end of the week. You are throwing away free attacks a day, so it is kind of wasteful, but... I just prefer the margin of error. And finally, we have Spiritual Altar. This has been reduced from 20 fragments down to 15, so we've lost 5. This will probably still be split into 2 rewards of 5 and 10. The first 5 is quite likely possible, the last 10 are very likely not possible. Spiritual Altar is typically a very difficult event to finish because it just requires whaling pretty much. Typically you need to pull around 6 legendaries or so throughout the event to actually finish it, maybe even more. It's just such a crazy amount of summons required to win this one, so I don't really recommend worrying about this one too much. The odds of getting it is just so low. I think it's better personally to summon on these two windows on the arrival of heroes, just because at least you have a chance of placing in the top three of the Oracle's Trial, and also the requirement to get the shards is a bit lower than it is in Spiritual Altar, but we'll see. I'm going to keep track of all of the different events throughout this event, and I'll make a calendar off of it. But typically that's how it goes. So so on the back of that, I would say the hardest ones in this are definitely the Arrival and Spiritual of Heroes. I never like Tales of Smith because it requires so much gold. And now that we've had a reduction in stamina, it's actually quite hard. Aside from that, I think it should generally be quite easy. I think the only ones that are a bit dubious are these three here and the Tales of the Smith. And say you remove all of them, so that works out as 45 less, you still end up with 70 and you're most likely going to get at least a couple of these, and you'll probably place in the top three in at least one of these Oracle's Trials, and that should get you to the 75. So overall, I think it's not too bad. If you're a very new player, this might actually be quite tricky. If you are very new to the game, I do suggest trying quite hard to win a few Oracle's Trials, especially at the start. People tend to warm up towards the end of the event when they realize they're too close and they might not get it. So my suggestion will be try your best to win the early ones. The later ones, people do compete quite hard to win. So... That pretty much covers my event guide for a Soldier's Shard Summon event. Hopefully this helps you. If you have any questions or things I haven't really covered that well, then do leave a comment and I will get back to you. Thank you guys very much for watching. Have a lovely day. Take care and bye-bye.